Every two hours seems very kind of excessive or intense, right? It's not like that SPF protection goes to zero, it just lessens. If you want perfectly flawless makeup, but also to be able to reapply a really good even protection of sunscreen throughout the day, then Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to reapply sunscreen. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel toroku shichatte kudasai. So this is probably one of my most requested videos of all time and it is how to reapply sunscreen, especially on top of makeup. I did briefly talk about it in a past video and there's already so many amazing creators who have done videos on this topic. But if you guys ask, I'm going to deliver. So I thought I would do a dedicated video as this topic definitely does deserve it, including the few different ways to go about it and my personal tips and tricks. So first things first, why? Why do we need to reapply sunscreen? I think most of us do know this, but unfortunately, sunscreen isn't something that lasts all day and that SPF protection does lose its effectiveness over time, especially if you are active or out and about in the sun, like swimming, um, sweating a lot, even just touching your face can remove that sun protection. And to maintain that highest level of sun protection, it is generally recommended to reapply your sunscreen every two hours. But every two hours, seems very kind of excessive or intense, right? Especially if you do wear makeup, it seems like an impossible task to be reapplying sunscreen every two hours. So my first tip is to be realistic. The recommendation of reapplying every two hours is to achieve that highest level of protection. And even after two hours, it's not like that SPF protection goes to zero, it just lessens. So for example, if you start off with SPF 50, a couple hours later, it might only have the effectiveness of SPF 30, as an example. So if you are constantly in the sun or swimming where that sunscreen is easily going to come off, yes, you should definitely be reapplying every two hours. But for most people, this just simply is not the case. Especially me, on my average day, I probably spend like 90 to 95 percent of the day in the shade where I do not have any direct sunlight. So for me being realistic I apply my sunscreen in the morning and then I reapply once generally before I'm going to leave my house in some shape or form. So that's only one reapplication throughout the day. This is going to be different for every single person considering factors like how much sun exposure, your skin type, the climate you live in. But the one thing we can collectively do no matter what your skin type or situation may be is to apply a solid base layer. So this is talking about the first application of the day most likely in the morning. So for this grab your SPF of choice and apply a generous amount. Preferably a lotion or cream type formula just because it does give the most even coverage. I do also recommend using a higher protection like SPF 50 especially at the start of the day because as I said earlier, that protection does decrease over time. So for example, if you start off with SPF 15, like how much lower can it go? <laughs> so using a high protection is going to give you a better chance of that protection lasting longer. The recommendation of how much sunscreen you should apply for your face is a quarter teaspoon for your face or half a teaspoon for your face, neck and ears. If you just don't like applying a ton at once, you can always layer your sunscreen and it's actually going to give a more even application and if you do use one with a elegant texture like the one I'm using here the Dr. Suricol Hyal Reuth Moist Sun honestly you won't even mind applying it twice. I do generally use the two finger method just because it is the easiest and quickest and most convenient way to know how much you're applying like every single morning and always make sure you do apply extra to your neck and ears. This first base application is going to be the most important application of the day. So make sure that you have a sunscreen that you really do enjoy using and that you're actually going to apply the proper amount. I know for some people it has been quite the journey to try find their holy grail sunscreen. So if you do have a holy grail sunscreen then I want you to write your skin type, the climate that you live in and then also the name of that holy grail sunscreen in a comment below so we can help each other out you know everyone else can look at the comments and see each other's recommendations and hopefully know which sunscreen to try out next all right now on to the main portion of the video and the reason why we're all here 
reapplication. Once again, I'm going to come back to this point, but be realistic. If you want a perfectly flawless makeup, but also to be able to reapply a really good, even protection of sunscreen throughout the day, then like give up now because that is impossible. You're just going to have to pick and choose whether you want absolutely flawless, perfect looking makeup or the health of your skin. I think I'm going to choose the health of my skin. So most days I honestly do not wear makeup. So if that's the case, yes, you can reapply your sunscreen like you did at the start of the day. You just slap it on easy. Other days when I do wear makeup, generally speaking, I do wear very light makeup like a BB cream. The only day where I probably wear like a full face of makeup is when I film. The reapplication process is not going to be as easy or look as flawless the more makeup you're wearing. So maybe consider wearing lesser or lighter makeup, especially on days that you know you're going to be out in the sun all day and need to reapply. So the first option of reapplication is using a sun stick. So I do feel like this may be the most popular way to reapply sunscreen these days and they have become more and more available in the last couple of years. Like I feel like so many great sun sticks have launched and I feel like the number one reason to why they have become so popular is simply its convenience. You can reapply without touching your face. It is so compact and also not a liquid so you can chuck it in your bag easy. In our household I think we have one in pretty much every bag that we frequently take out and it is Logan my partner's favorite way to reapply sunscreen just because it is so so easy. So the one I've chosen today is the new sun stick from Hado Hado Wanda who is sponsoring a portion of this video. This one is called the Black Bamboo Daily Soothing Sun Shield. I do love many of their products already, as I'm sure you guys already know, especially their yellow SPF. I've been loving that onto my second tube now, but I thought I would use this one as an example because I feel like it is that happy medium in terms of finish. So by that, I mean something that is not too dewy and not too matte. So most skin types can use it. Logan did take it upon himself to kind Kind of gatekeep this one I guess. I was looking for this sun stick the other day because I was planning this video and I couldn't find it and I was like oh my god where'd I put it? Then I messaged Logan who was at work and he's like oh yeah sorry like it's in my bag so yeah he's really been enjoying it this one. I have dry skin and he has combo skin but we both can use it so when it comes to reapplying with a sun stick I personally do like to blot that excess oil first. To do this I do generally use blotting paper or blotting sheets. I find it's just the easiest and also really really affordable. This one is like more of a proper one, the Kose Softimo Super Clean Tissue. This one is like a black sheet so you can really see the oil that comes off. But I do generally just go to Daiso because they have them so cheap. I mean I've had this one literally forever. Look how like destroyed this pack is. But you can get like 300 sheets for a couple of dollars and worst case if you still don't want to spend money on blotting paper you can use tissue. I generally have pocket tissues in my bag so if you're out and about and you want to plot your face literally grab a tissue and like split it like this it's like a really thin sheet and then you can literally just use the tissue to blot your face I do this pretty often there are options on how to blot your face before you go in with your sun stick. So I do recommend warming up the formula slightly on your hand. So on the back of your hand or even on your arm, wherever you want. This also helps to get rid of any dust that might be sitting just on top here. And then you go in and apply. You do want to go from in to out and go with a few swipes. I think I'm pretty generous when it comes to using my sun stick. Like I don't even count how many swipes that I do over my face. I just apply until I feel like I'm satisfied with the amount of coverage. You definitely need more than one swipe. This one does have this like cooling feeling when you're applying it. I can't always feel it but just then I was using it on my um, wrist here and there definitely is this like subtle cooling feeling to it and I do always get the question of oh which sunscreens don't move makeup or won't mess up or move you know my foundation. It simply does not 
not exist. Like, I'm sorry, but you're applying something physically and dragging it on your skin. It's going to move your makeup. Like that's just, that's just like physics. Is it physics? But if you like dragged your finger on your skin, it's going to move your makeup and remove it. So I have never met a sun stick that doesn't move your makeup and I don't believe it does exist. If you found it, like tell me in a comment, I'll be very curious, but just try to adjust your expectations some makeup will come off. So once it is all applied, I personally do like to take a cushion puff. Sometimes it is just the like puff in my compact that I'm carrying around in my bag and just do a quick pat down to make sure it looks more even. This one, as the brand describes, has a semi-matte finish, although depending on your skin type or climate, you might feel a little bit differently about it. The Hada Hada Wonder one is also vegan, cruelty-free and fragrance-free. And for those who may be curious, it is also considered reef safe. And yeah, that's pretty much it if you're happy with the reapplication. If you really wanted to, you can reapply like a little bit of blush to give it a little bit more togetherness. And I do recommend cleaning it every now and then with some rubbing alcohol on a tissue. Some other sunstick recommendations depending on your skin type for oily skin, I believe the Isentry, the Tokobo, and I haven't personally tried it, but the Beauty of Joseon one seems to be one that a lot of oily skin people like. For normal skin, the Hada Hada Wanda one and also the Round Lab one I highly recommend. And for dry skin, I do still feel like the Abib one gives the most glow and moisture. So the second option for reapplication is sun spray or mist. To be honest, this might be my new favorite way to reapply sunscreen on top of makeup, but I do feel like most of the sun sprays that I have tried do have more of a dewy finish. So it might be something that I recommend a bit more for drier skin people. So again, in terms of convenience, I think it's great because you can apply it without touching your face. I know there's a number of sun sprays where it doesn't recommend to apply directly but to apply onto your hands and then onto your face honestly why on earth would I use that that like defeats the whole purpose of it being a spray so yeah nah and this might be just like my own opinion but where k-beauty excels and is more superior with sun sticks I actually think Japanese sunscreens do sun sprays and mists really really well so my recent go-to has been the Kosei Sunkat UV Protect Mist so the new trend with sun sprays in Japan seems to be non aerosol just like pump mists this one does definitely give more of a dewy finish but as a dry skin girly I definitely don't mind and I do find it disturbs the makeup less compared to other ones I've tried. The process is pretty similar to a sun stick. I will blot off any excess first and then spray a very generous amount across the face. Now a couple tips when doing this. Obviously close your mouth. Um, we don't want to consume the SPF so close your mouth, hold your breath and just apply a generous amount. A lot of it does disperse and not 100% of the product does land on your face. So you want to just overcompensate, I guess, of how much you apply. I did try to measure how much a quarter teaspoon would be with this. It was quite hard because the spray kept like pushing the product out. But I think it was about five to six sprays for a quarter teaspoon. So I know I definitely spray more than that. I think I easily spray 10. I don't know, I've never really counted. But yeah, just make sure you apply a generous amount. And again, I do like to pat down with a cushion, especially with sprays as it does give quite the dewy finish. But you can always apply powder on top if you do have powder with you to give more of a semi-matte or matte finish. So, you know, you can customize the finish. It's no worries. Although an FYI tip, um, if you don't wear waterproof mascara or wear a lot of eyeshadow, just be aware not to spray too much on your eyes because it can kind of disrupt and move your makeup on there. But in terms of face makeup, I actually don't feel like it moves that much at all. Another one that is quite similar to this sun cut is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Aqua Protect Mist. As I mentioned, pretty similar formula. This one is also a non-aerosol and just a pump spray. It does have a similar finish, but maybe a little less dewy, although this one does have fragrance, whereas this one is fragrance free. Both of them can be used on your face, body, and they even recommend it on your hair. There is absolutely no white cast and they are said to be waterproof as well. Although one thing I need to mention is that the first ingredient is ethanol. So if you don't like alcohol, I know you're going to just probably scurry away into a corner being like, oh my God, I could not use that. And that's totally fine. But because of that, when you spray this one, you can definitely smell that alcohol when you first spray it. Whereas this one, it does have fragrance so it covers that. So you kind of have to pick and choose if you want to go fragrance free or if you want to cover the 
fragrance of alcohol, but it does disperse obviously after you've applied it. Other SPF sprays that I have used and liked in the past, the sun cut aerosol ones, the white and the gold ones. I used to use them non-stop when I lived in Japan because they're very, very affordable and high protection. But as they are aerosol, you probably won't be able to find them online that much. So these have been great options for wanting to purchase online too. Right, moving on to the third option, which is sun cushions or compacts. So this one, I can't personally recommend too much because I just haven't found one that I genuinely like using consistently. And it is because most sun cushions do use physical filters, which means they generally do have a cast and it's like painting on this white cast on top of your makeup. I just don't think it looks good. And it also means that not all skin tones can probably use it. Yes, it's an option. And if you found one that works for you, great. I've heard pretty good things about the Round Lab and the Skinnik one. But yeah, I haven't personally tried them, so I can't recommend. Fourth and final option is to simply reapply your regular sunscreen with a sponge or puff. This option does definitely give you probably the most best and even coverage of reapplication. But in terms of convenience, I must say it's probably the worst, especially if you are out and about to carry around your regular sunscreen, to apply it like on the back of your hand, to get a clean sponge, apply it, pat it in. It does seem like a lot of effort. I think if you're at home, it's a great option, but I just don't see myself doing that when I'm out. With this option, you can also use a tinted SPF. That's going to help give a little bit more coverage of that makeup back on your face too. The numbers in number three, I've used forever. I also feel like the Claire's one, not that many people talk about it, but it does give a decent amount of coverage. And then recently I was trying the Sun Bum one as well. A lot of tinted sunscreens don't come in that many color options. So that's also another kind of inconvenience to that option. And before anyone mentions it, I am not going to be including SPF powders as an option. I just don't think that they give enough protection as a reapplication. So, but all in all my main kind of takeaways and tips for reapplication is to one be realistic and two do what works for you. Everyone's lifestyle sun exposure and skin type is different so not one way or one kind of solution is going to work for every single person and there are always other options that you can help yourself stay out of the sun like just walk in the shade wear a hat like it's okay you're gonna be fine just be mindful and use your common sense. I really do hope that was a helpful video for some of you and if you do have any other tips or tricks that I haven't recommended please leave it in the comments below as we would love to hear it. If you do have another moment please make sure you check out one of these videos here and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Mwah.